Growing up, I loved eating galette complète, or as I used to call them, ham and cheese crepes. It's a French crepe that's filled with some ham of Gruyere, has a little egg on it, and the crepe itself is made with buckwheat flour, which has a lovely weedy, nutty flavor. Now, when you make these, you can't use all buckwheat flour because buckwheat flour is gluten-free, and you need some of that gluten to hold the crepe together or it's just gonna fall apart in the pan. So when you make these, you really want to use about three parts buckwheat flour to one part all-purpose flour. So I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of buckwheat flour. And if you weigh this out, it's three and three-eighths ounces. Three-eighths. All right, and to this we're going to add a quarter cup of all-purpose flour, which is about one and a quarter ounces. Perfect. All right, last but not least, we're going to add a little bit of salt to this. This is half a teaspoon of table salt. And that's it for the dry ingredients. I'm just going to whisk this together. Now on to the wet ingredients. We're going to use whole milk. This is two cups of whole milk. To this we're going to add three whole eggs. I'm just going to whisk this together. Now we're going to combine these two and add half of this liquid to the dry ingredient bowl. I'm just going to whisk this in. Mm. Oh, you can smell that buckwheat right away as it gets wet. All right, now I'm going to add some butter. We're going to add four tablespoons of melted and cooled salted butter. Now, I've tested adding it to the milk mixture. It doesn't work so well because the butter's a little on the warm side, the milk and eggs are a little on the cool side, and the butter forms crystals that make these big holes in the crepes. And then we're going to finish by adding the rest of the liquid. All right, so the batter's done. Now we can get cooking. When cooking crepes, you want to be sure to use a non-stick skillet. And here I have a 12-inch non-stick skillet, and I've been heating it up for five minutes on low heat with just a little bit of vegetable oil in the pan. Having a non-stick skillet is crucial if you want to get that crepe out in one piece. But also, you want to heat it up over low heat so that there's no hot spots and you get the most even browning possible. Now I'm going to crank it up to medium let that heat for about a minute before we start cooking. Crepes are a little finicky and you have to dial in that perfect medium heat. And that may take a crepe or two, but even the bad ones taste good. So no love lost there. And now I'm just gonna wipe it clean, leaving just a film of oil on the bottom of the pan, almost like seasoning the pan, just not letting it be absolutely dry. And we're gonna do a test crepe. I'm just gonna use a teaspoon measure. Always whisk the batter before each crepe. That way it's nice and evenly incorporated. All right, we're gonna add just a mini test crepe. Set the timer for 20 seconds, and after 20 seconds, the bottom of this test crepe should be good and brown, and that's how you know you're in the range of the perfect medium heat. That is a perfectly browned little crepe. All right, set that one aside, and now time for the real deal. Let's whisk this batter. Here I have a third of a cup to help measure the batter and get it into the pan. I'm gonna take the pan off heat, pour it onto one side, and then do a quick swirl. As you come on the back, you do a little shake. And it's that shake on the back side. It took me a while to figure that out. But that just ensures that on this back side, the skillet gets evenly coated. So swirl and shake. Back on the heat. We're gonna cook this for about 35 seconds. You're gonna see that the edges will start to brown and the top looks pretty dry. And that's when it's time to flip. So this has been cooking for about 35 seconds and you can see it's starting to get nice and brown around the edges. Now lots of ways to flip a crepe. I found this silly spatula that I bought for cooking pancakes with my 11 year old. It's terrible for pancakes, but it is perfect for crepes because it's so flimsy. So I like to slide this spatula right under the center, lift it up, flip it over. We're just gonna cook it about 20 seconds on the second side. Now, part of mastering the heat is that you have to play with it a little bit. As you go along, the pan gets hotter and hotter. And this amount of steam coming off, that's perfect. You see any more than that, you gotta turn that heat down. Put it on a wire rack, that's gonna cool nicely. Now I'm gonna finish making all these crepes and this recipe makes about 10. I finished cooking all of the crepes, and of course you can fill them with anything. Nutella and buckwheat is pretty popular in our house. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take four crepes and putting them spotty side down. The other great thing about these crepes is they can hold well in the fridge for at least three days, or in the freezer if you stack them between pieces of parchment paper, they'll hold for up to a month, so a nice little elegant brunch is just a minute away. I spread them out here. Obviously, they're overflowing the pan because we're gonna fold them up. We're gonna start by placing a piece of ham right in the center. Now, this is black forest ham, but any sort of deli ham will work well. 
All right, on top of this, we're gonna put some grated Gruyere cheese, about a third of a cup per crepe. Now the thing about the egg is you don't want the egg to roll all over the place. So we're gonna make a little cheese nest for that egg yolk to sit in. The egg white can run around, but you want the yolk to stay nice and in the center of the nest. Now it's time to add the eggs. All right, one at a time, I'm just gonna crack it right into the center of the cheese. Perfect. Now we're gonna fold up the edges of the crepes so that each one is a square. You wanna press on the crepe lightly just to help it adhere, leaving that yolk exposed. So they're like little packages. And if they're a little up on the side, that's okay. Once all the sides are folded up, we're just gonna brush them with a little melted butter, help them get nice and crisp in the oven. The butter also helps those flaps stay down as they cook. And these are ready for the oven. Now they bake very quickly, eight to 10 minutes in a 450 degree oven. And what you're looking for is that the crepe has gotten nice and crisp around the edges and that yolk has been covered over with a thin film of white, but it's still a little jiggly. Into the oven they go. Oh, I love it when you bring them out and they're still sizzling a little bit. Garnish with a few chives. While they're nice and warm, that way the chives will stick. Oh, yep. And there's no waiting for this. You wanna dig in while they're good and hot. Oh, that is the perfect yolk. Mm. Mmm. Ah, oh, the French really know what they're doing. It's perfectly cooked eggs with a little cheese, a little ham, and instead of a big honking piece of toast, it's just this very delicate buckwheat flavor crepe. I could probably eat all four of these myself. If you wanna make a perfect galette complet, be sure to use a 12-inch nonstick skillet. Let that skillet heat up for five minutes before you start cooking. And last but definitely not least, when you add the batter to the pan, do the swirl and shake. From America's Test Kitchen at Home, a wonderful recipe for galette complete. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>